hello hello guys welcome 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 today we're going to be making a blazer jacket and we're going to first draft the basic bodice pattern for my beginners so let's just get straight into doing that so the measurements that we're going to be using are going to be listed over here then I'm leaving a gap of about one inch to draw my starting line. So there on top, I've got my shoulder line and my center line. Then I'll put in my vertical measurements. So my shoulder to bust is 10 inches, shoulder to waist 16 inches, and shoulder to hip, that is 22 inches. Then we can go ahead and put in our horizontal measurements. So I'll just label this as the back piece. I'm going to start with the back piece because it's going to help me to make the collar. I'll need the neckline for the back piece. Then let's just label this. So this is shoulder to bust. So our bust line, waistline, and hip line. Then I'll come to the shoulder line. So my shoulder is 16 divided by 2, which is 8 inches. Then I'm going to add 0 0.5 for ease and mark there. We'll come back for the shoulder slope. Then let me go to the neckline. The neck width is 3 inches, which I'm going to mark there. Then the neck depth for the back piece is going to be 1 inch, which will be marked there. Then you can go ahead and curve the neckline for the back. All right, then we'll go to the shoulder line. We'll come down by one for our shoulder slope. As we know, our shoulder is not straight. That's why we slope the shoulder line like that. Then from there, for the armhole depth, my armhole is 16 divided by two, which is eight, and I'll add 0 0.5 for ease and here this line is now going to be our chest line so go ahead and label this as the chest line then we'll come to the armhole depth So go ahead and get the midpoint of your armhole depth, like this. So I'll put the midpoint here. Then I'll go in. I'll go and put in my bust pan or nipple to nipple measurement, which is four inches from the center line. Then draw a straight line like this. Then. We're going to go to the waistline and impute our dart. So our dart is one inch. So 0 0.5 this side, 0 0.5 this side. Then go up by two inches from the hip line. And at the chest line, I'm just getting the measurement of the chest line instead of drawing a straight line. So I'll just mark it here. This is where the chest line is. And I'll measure from the center line to make sure it's also falling at 4 inches for our nipple to nipple measurement. Then we can go ahead and connect the lines. All right, here is our dart, as you can see. Then we can put in our vertical measurement. So my bust was 40 inches divided by four, which is 10, of which I'm going to mark here. And I'm also going to make mark it at the chest line. This will help us to curve the back armhole. So I'll go ahead and curve the back armhole from the center 
of the armhole depth up to the line where the bust uh, is ending and there at 10 inches then for your waist measurement my waist was 34 divided by 4 which is um, 8.5 then put in the dart make sure you add the dart allowance there okay then at the hip line my hip was 42 divided by 4 which gives us 10.5 then we can go ahead and join the lines so join your lines Then at the waistline, I'm going to go in by 0.5 inch for the center dart. This will help with the shaping of the jacket on the back as the back is also not straight. Okay. Then we'll come to the shoulder line. We'll get the center of our shoulder line like this. My shoulder is measuring 5.5, .5, then I'll get the center of that, which is here. Then I'm going to join this to the um, dart to make the shoulder dart. If you want to make the, um, uh, the princess dart, you join this line to your armhole. Get the midpoint of the armhole, then join. So this is it about the back piece. We can now move to the front piece so leave four inches here and six inches over here so we will trace in the line or the back piece onto this pattern okay so i've left the armhole and i've left the neckline and the dart so the rest is the same i've gone down by one inch at the shoulder slope also so for the front neckline go down by three inches and let's just label this the front then you can go ahead and curve your front neckline Then we'll come to the armhole depth. So get the midpoint of your armhole depth just like we did with the back. Like this. Then go in by 0 0.5 inches. Then put in your horizontal measurement, so 10 inches at the bust and at the chest line. Then we can connect these lines to curve our front armhole. Then we'll put in our nipple to nipple measurement or bust pan. So measure four inches on your bust, waist, and hip line. Then you can go ahead and draw a straight line like that. Then at the bust line, go down by one inch. And at the hip line, go up by two inches. This is for our front dart. Then we're going to put 0 0.5 this side, 0 0.5 this side for our one inch dart intake. Then go ahead and join. Like that. Then I've already added the dart allowance to this measurement at the waist and the hip line you put the same 10.5. Then join the line. Then put in the button allowance. This is the button allowance of one inch. 
that I'm putting at the front piece to make the lapel now. So we've put in our button allowance of one inch at the front. Then you can put your uh, brick point at the bust or at the waist. But I'm going to go up by two inches from the waist for my brick point. My brick point is just where your lapel is going to start from. So the distance is two inches there. Okay, so connect this line to the neckline like this. So you can already see the lapel forming. You can see the line here. Then we're going to extend our lapel by 1.5 inches from the button allowance line. 1.5 inches. Then connect this to the brick point. Like that. Then here we are not going to need this line anymore. But we are going to make a notch just somewhere there. Okay, so you can cancel this line out so that you don't get confused when cutting out the lapel. Then for the back piece, we drafted it first so that we can use the neckline for the back when making the collar for the front. So measure your um, neckline for the back piece like this. So mine is measuring 3.5 inches. Then I'll get my ruler and make it slant, make it be in a slanted position following the lapel line like this. Let the lapel line guide you on how to slope your collar. So it is from here that you can see. So measure 3.5 from the shoulder line. So go out by 0 0.5 and connect that line to the neckline. Then from here, we can create our notch here. So from the tip of the lapel, go up by 0 0.5 inch. You can go up to 1 inch, but I'll use 0 0.5 inch. Then connect that line to the button allowance line here. Connect it there. So there is our notch, you can see it is formed. Then place this ruler in a slanted position, not straight. It shouldn't be straight for your collar, it should be in a slanted position. So let's slant, then decide how wide you want your collar to be. So mine is going to be 3.5 inches wide. So I'll mark 3.5 here. and join that line. So this line won't be needed anymore. Then you can go ahead and also join this line. Okay, then we can go to the shoulder line. So like we did for the back, get the center front of the shoulder line, then get the midpoint. Then connect that to the bust line. Like this. Then I've decided to curve my collar, as you can see. And then I'll also curve this ending. As you can see, it's the one that's going to fit on the back part of the a neckline so I'm going to curve it to match the shape of the back neckline
then you can see this is our new curve we can cancel out this straight line then i'm going to add 0.5 inch for ease at the side of the front piece and you do the same at the back piece the sewing allowance i'm going to add it at the uh, when cutting on the fabric then i went ahead and extended this line up to the chest line up to just above the chest line but you can leave it on the bust line there is not much difference then we can cut this piece like this So this is our back. So you can label this as the center back one and side back two. And you can also label this as the back piece so that you don't get confused with these pieces. Then we can now cut out the front piece. So we start with our collar. So I slanted my collar. I curved my collar as you can see. Then for the lapel carefully, you can curve this line, but it's better we work with straight lines actually as beginners. So there is our lapel. So that's how you cut this piece so this is our front so this is center front one and side front two and we are done with our pieces this is the collar here so here is the fabric that we're going to use to make our jacket do stay tuned for the sewing tutorial of this pattern 